Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to show you how to play Catharsis. Now this is a great tune, I love playing this. Uh, fortunately I played a lot. It was written by Amy Ken from New England and um, the, uh, it was published in the Portland Collection which is a, a big uh, important collection of contra dance tunes and it's very widely played in the US as well as in Ireland and Scotland. And uh, as usual with these tunes I looked it up in uh, thesession.org and found a wonderful story behind this tune and, and the title which I've, uh, I suppose it's an unusual title and I, it's never really occurred to me why it was called Catharsis. And um, Amy Can herself uh, wrote a, a, a note on session.org uh, under the discussion of this and she explained that um, she had arranged with her boyfriend to go out on a Saturday uh, to have some quality time together and um, she got a message from him on the Friday saying uh, he didn't know whether they had anything arranged but um, he was going hiking with a friend. Now she had turned down a quality well paid wedding gig on the Saturday and she was none too pleased um, <laughs> that he'd forgotten and that she'd nobly turned down this gig in order to go out with him. So rather than immediately pick up the phone and start screaming at him, she instead picked up her fiddle and uh, wrote this tune in a fury within several minutes. And um, so this is her catharsis for that unfortunate event. Now it's got two very interesting sections. Um, we we'll start off in G minor with the, um, the A part. <laughs> I've listened to several versions which are um, a little bit different from one another. The version I'm going to show you is based on Natalie McMaster and I didn't actually realise this until last week. Uh, I learned it off a friend and she had obviously learned it off Natalie McMaster because that is what it sounds like. Um, so this A section, um, I'm going to show you two different ways of accenting it. The way I like to play it, um, I put an accent on like that and it's kind of similar to a Georgia shuffle except I'm starting off with three notes down slurred and then Last um, two bars I'm doing all separate and then three slurred. If you want to act on the first beat then probably four slurs in a row. That's probably the best way to accent that. Uh, on the repeat I like to do a lot of G drones. Now the B part of this is based on the double shuffle um, which is a two bar pattern, a syncopated pattern of four threes and two twos. So in this case it's arranged one two three two two three three two three four two three one two one two one two three one two three one two three one two three one two one two da 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 da
If you've never done that before, it's worthwhile just getting the rhythm going before you even pick up the fiddle. Daddle da 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 daddle it's the, um, it's the shuffle that you will find in the Orange Blossom Special and similar tunes but arranged in a slightly different way because they will start off with two twos and then four threes. And I do have a video all about the double shuffle if you're interested in that. So we are doing, um, we're starting off with the G and a D with your third finger. And then you're going to have to lift your third finger round so that it comes off the A string. So you've got your third finger down and you've got your second finger already in place underneath it. So we can go So that's worth practicing a few times just on its own. Second finger down on the D string on an F. Uh, start with the third finger above it. So the second finger is staying there all the time. And we're doing that same up, uh, ascending line as we did before. And then the bit that people often find tricky. Third finger goes on again. And the first finger goes down to E flat. Let's do that a few times. And then the line finishes off. And then back to it. Let's go through all of that section. One, two, three, four. played fast, <laughs> a lot faster than that, uh, in order to uh, acquire the, um, the actual catharsis. So let's hear the A section and the B section together with the backing. the basic tune and um, it's quite hard even at that tempo. So if you really love this tune but you find that uh, B part really too hard then there is a cop-out version which I'm going to show you and basically it, um, it still has the double shuffle and it has the top line and the rocking but what it doesn't have is the descending line and providing you've got someone else playing the chords and that descending line then it doesn't really matter. So, if you just do an octave, so instead of going from D, D to G, you go from D to D. doesn't sound too bad once once you've got the chords there. Now some people would 
would say that that takes away the whole point of the tune, <laughs> and you're kind of right. But it depends on uh, philosophically how you look at the tune, whether it's the effect or the what goes into it that matters. Uh, one good thing about doing this cheating version is if you take the same thing up an octave, it's quite easy to do. Which works pretty well. So we're in third position. Uh, first finger on the D, fourth finger on the D. So that works fine, uh, but it wouldn't work solo. So if you're just playing this on your own or with other instruments but no chords or no bass, then it's not going to work because you do need that descending line. So, if you would like a copy of these dots of the different versions, then do subscribe and send me an email and I'll be happy to send you a copy. And I'll play you out with a couple of times round doing, first of all, the correct version and then the cheating version. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you again soon.